See, here's why a lot of people don't understand what the Great Tribulation is. They talk about the Great Tribulation, the Great Tribulation. And then they say it's a seven-year period. And, and then they have an opinion. Pre-tribulation, post-tribulation, mid-tribulation, rapture. They're talking about stuff they don't know anything about. Let me tell you what the Great Tribulation is. The Great Tribulation is the great falling away. And him who stands firm to the end will be saved. In the midst of Babylon the Great Falls and the Mark of the Beast, at the end of it, the beginning of the Great Tribulation, it's a three and a half year period, 1,260 days. After that begins the period of the two witnesses and the 144,000. And that's the outpouring of God's wrath. That's why it says these are them who have come out of the Great Tribulation. These are them who were victorious over the Mark of the Beast and the Beast and his image. You put all that together and you get a clear picture. The Bible says that the two witnesses have prophesied the full 1,260 days. That's the second 1,260 days to the day exactly they're put to death. Then exactly three and a half days later, they're raised from the dead. So there's your, there's your explanation of the Great Tribulation, what it is, what it means, everything you need to know. Now, you might say, well, when's the rapture in there? It's exactly 1,260 days before the two witnesses are put to death. Well, now you're setting dates. The only way you're setting a date is if you were to be able to say the two witnesses are put to death on, you know, February 23rd, 2020, let's say. Just as a, and then you were to back that up 1,260 days, then you'll be able to say the rapture happens on that day, and then you back it up another 1,260 days, and you say that's where the tribulation period begins. And what we don't know is when it begins. We can know based on the Bible where it ends, and at the end of it, God can show you and back you up and show you, you know, do all the mathematical numbers on the calendar. And at the, on the day that those two witnesses are put to death for their faith, that marks the end of the 1,260 days, the second 1,260 days. So you go back from there and you find the rapture, 1,200. Why does it say 1,260 days? God is showing you that he knows the day and the hour, but he won't reveal it to you. He won't reveal it to any of us. If you could figure out the day, the exact day and hour that the Great Tribulation begins, you can calculate from that day 1,260 days, and your rapture is going to happen on that day. From that day, you can calculate another 1,260 days, and then you can know for sure that the two witnesses will complete their prophesying, and then they'll be put to death. Three and a half days later, they'll be raised from the dead. The Great Tribulation, I'm pre-tribulation, I'm mid-tribulation, I'm... Yeah, listen, you, if you're pre-tribulation rapture, if you believe that, then what you're saying is the great falling away will never happen. For those who think that the pre there's a pre-tribulation, and that's what they teach. They say, no, that's what it means. But you can't... Here's the problem. Here's the problem. Biblically, you have to manipulate a 2 Thessalonians chapter 2. And completely convolute it. You have to completely convolute Revelation chapter 14 starting in verse 6. And you have to take verse 7 and 8. You have to take verse 14 through 20 and put it up before verse 7 or verse 9 for sure. So you have to convolute. In order to, be, to believe in pre-tribulation rapture. You have to convolute Revelation chapter 14 and rearrange those verses. You have to convolute Matthew chapter 24 and take out where Jesus says, but for the sake of the elect, those days are shortened. You have to erase that completely from Matthew chapter 24. Then you have to change um, 2 Thessalonians chapter 2, verse 3, 4, 1, 2, 3, 4, and 5. You basically have to do a lot of changing of, of what the Bible says in order to believe in pre-tribulation rapture. So, 
the rapture is not going to happen until after the great falling away, like, like Paul says, regarding the day of Christ and our being gathered unto him. That day will not happen until first there be a great falling away and the man of sin is revealed. That great falling away is the great tribulation. Now you might say, are you saying you know the day and the hour? Yes, I do. The exact day and the hour, I can tell you when the exact day and the hour will happen of the rapture. You know what it is? Well, you got to go forward in time and find out the day that the two witnesses are put to death. On that day, you back it up 1,260 days, and there's your rapture. From that, you back up another 1,260 days, and that's your great tribulation and your great falling away period. That's the period where the mark, where Babylon the Great falls and the mark of the beast comes out. Three and a half years. And it, you can't really pinpoint the day and the hour that it begins. Because it could happen, it could begin a year and a half before Babylon the Great Falls, or it could begin right after Babylon the Great Falls. It could begin, it could may have, we might be in the Great Tribulation right now, but it has not yet manifested itself. It could be that in 2014 was the beginning of the Great, when ISIS rose up, and that was, God says, this is the beginning of it. I don't know. No one knows the day or the hour. But you know what? There is a day and the hour, and God knows it. Jesus even says that. God knows it. No one knows, but only God the Father. In other words, there is a day and an hour, but no one knows it. The only way you could figure it out is if you knew the exact day and hour that the two witnesses are put to death. So you want to understand the great tribulation period and the great tribulation and, and all that. There it is. It's all there right there in the Bible, very clear. The gospel goes out to every nation, language, tribe, and people. Then Babylon the Great falls. Then the mark of the beast comes out and there's great persecution. Then the harvest of the earth. The rapture. Now for those of you who believe that there's going to be some sort of revival for those who are left behind. Okay, you're going to have to change what the Bible says. You're going to have to take the parable of the ten virgins. And you're going to have to change that and say that. After the bridegroom comes, those foolish virgins who went out into the night come back and they're and they're knocking on the door again. And he says, the door is closed. Well, you're going to have to change that and say that the foolish virgins went out into the night, the bridegroom came and took the wise virgins, and then when the foolish virgins came back, they said, please let us in. And he said, oh, come on in, ladies. That's not what that, so so in order to believe that there's a revival after the rapture harvest of the earth you also got to completely change the whole concept of behold I come like a thief in the night blessed is him who is ready and then there's he who stands firm till the end will be saved and that end is those days are cut short for the sake of the elect which is right in the midst of the Great Tribulation. That's why the Bible says we see a scene in heaven. These are them who have come out of the Great Tribulation. And in another verse, it says, They love not their life so much as to shrink from death. And, in, and that's Revelation chapter 20, verse 4, I think. And then in another verse, it says, These are them who were victorious over the beast and his image. Those are the people we see in heaven. That's the wheat, folks. Those are them who stood firm to the end, and either were put to death for their faith or were raptured up, harvested after God says, blessed are those who die in the Lord from henceforth, which means they already went through, a, many of them will have already fasted a 40-day fast, sitting there in jail or in prison, waiting for the bridegroom to come in a jail cell. Some were put to death first. The sooner you die in these end days, the lower your status for eternity is in heaven. If you can, my job, here's what I have proclaimed. My job is to, to survive until everyone is prophesying, blessed are those who die in the Lord from henceforth. When that word rings out through the, through the cells of the prison system, of those who remain faithful to the Lord and refuse the mark of the beast, when you hear that prophecy come forth, blessed are those who die in the Lord from henceforth, that's when I'll go surrender my life, say, I'm ready, let's go, let's do this. And for the 144,000, you know what they're going to do? They're going to say, okay, I'm ready too. I'm going to go 
and surrender my life. And they're going to walk into that jail cell system and God's going to just go. Wah, wah, wah. And everybody's going to burn up and they're going to come walking out saying, I guess it's not God's will for me to die yet. I guess it's not my time yet. And so the 144,000, a lot of them might find out that they're part of the 144,000 only by the circumstance that God has supernatural protection over them. And after all these Christians are put to death for their faith, those mantles are going to be re redistributed. And at the end, there's two witnesses who are carrying every single mantle. The mantle of Elijah, the mantle of John the Baptist, the mantle of Enoch, the mantle of Moses, the mantle of... Isaiah, the mantle of Paul, the mantle of John, the mantle of Joseph, the mantle of Daniel, all resting on two guys, walking around with so much power from God, boom, fire down from heaven in one minute, boom, the word of God the next minute. So you need to know that Jesus is Lord and time is running out. And anybody who preaches that there's a revival after the rapture, they're preaching lies. They're disobedient, lukewarm. Not And here's where they contradict the scripture. The Bible says the spirit and the bride say, come Lord Jesus, come. So people who are really serving God are not going to want to stay behind to help. The Bible says that the souls under the altar are saying, How long, O Lord, how long before you pour out your wrath on the inhabitants of the earth and those who have shed our blood? And God says, Wait a little bit longer till the number is complete of the fellow saints to be put to death for their faith. That's part of the great tribulation period and the great falling away because those who don't want to, those who love their life, see, the Bible says these are them who. They did not love their life so much as to shrink from death. But there's another group who falls away. And that's the group of people who did love their life, who friendship with this world was enmity towards God, the Creflo Dollar group who love money, love this world. Their prayers are all about, God give me this and God give me that. Whew. So here's the deal. Come out of her, my people, lest ye share in her sins. What's going on right now in the world? This is the word you need to be. If you're going to put a um, post a video or proclaim something to your friends, proclaim this. Come out of her, my people, lest ye share in her sins. What does that mean? Come out of that lukewarm, disobedient Laodicea church. Come out of that lukewarm, disobedient, lukewarm, lukewarmness of Joel Osteen. Come out of her, my people, lest ye share in her sins, all you who go to Creflo Dollar's church and have the love of money and friendship and the world dome should be called the friendship with this world dome is enmity towards God or hatred towards God. You who are lukewarm, come out of her. Come out of that still small voice falsehood. Come out of that Renee M. lie that the rapture is going to happen before, before the mark of the beast. If that were the case, you could rearrange Revelation chapter 14, 15, and 16. You can't. If there's a revival after the rapture, it would say so in Revelation chapter 16. There's a very clear verse of scripture that after the rapture, the door is closed. There is no second chance. And God is only pouring out his wrath on the inhabitants of the earth. And there's 144,000 who followed the lamb wherever he goes. No lie was found in their mouth. They never defiled themselves with a the woman. Those are your guys who are left behind. They have the seal of God on their forehead. Everyone else has taken the mark of the beast and worshipped and bowed down to his image. That's what the Bible says. Everyone in the world will worship the beast and his image. It says it. It's in Revelation. The Bible says that the Antichrist will be given power and authority to make war with the saints and overcome them. It's all in Revelation chapter 13. The first beast rises up out of the sea. The second beast rises out of the earth. I'm sorry, but that's a navy attack coming out of the sea. That's a ground attack. The feet of the bear coming out of the earth. It has a blasphemous name on it, which is Islamic names. The name of Allah is a blasphemous name, and for still small voice to call herself still small voice, taking that name from Jesus, that becomes a blasphemous name. So I'll tell you right now, still small voice, the voice, the name that you chose for yourself, 
now has become a blasphemous name, that spirit Naviru calling himself Jesus and you calling yourself still small voice, then teaching, do you want to be left behind after the rapture and preparing people for after the rapture? You need to read your Bible and you don't know what it says. Offering people to stay behind to help. Thinking that the rapture could happen any minute when you know that the, the Bible says that the harvest of the earth happens after the great falling away and after the mark of the beast comes out. That's a very clear verse of scripture in 2 Thessalonians says regarding the day of Christ and our being gathered unto him. Do not let anyone deceive you by any means for that day will not happen until first there be a great falling away and the man of sin is revealed, or there be a great rebellion and the man of perdition is revealed, depending on what version you read. It's important to take multiple versions of the Bible, put them together, mix them up, and let the Lord reveal to you what word works in what situation and what context, because it's both. It is a great falling away. For the lukewarm, it's a falling away. I took the mark of the beast. boo -hoo. For others, it's a rebellion. I thought the rapture was to already happen. I won't serve a guy who calls the gravel on the great to fall and bring the mark of the beast out. As they take the mark of the beast. So in one case, it's a falling away. Oh, boo -hoo, I took the mark of the beast. I thought what still small voice said was going to happen. She said that the rapture was going to happen. Anyway, I'm going to stay behind to help. Maybe that's what it is. Wiping off their tears. I'll stay behind to help, then. Not really. The mark of the beast. Revelation chapter 14, verse 9. <laughs> and then you realize these people are so clueless, they don't see it. They don't see it, in, even though the Bible is clear. The Bible is clear about this stuff. It's crystal clear. And so now you put them in a situation where... You have to repent and undo all your false teaching and admit that you are wrong. Admit that that spirit, Nibiru, is not really Jesus that you meet with. Just saying. Admit that there is no left behind for those who are... Those who are left behind have taken the mark of the beast, worshipped the beast and his image, or they're the 144,000 with the seal of God on their forehead. Those are who are left behind, period. That's it. That's it. Anybody who tells you any differently is teaching falsehood and lies and preparing you to take the mark of the beast and experience the wrath of God. And that's why it says, you who are lukewarm, I'm going to vomit you up. And people don't like it when I say, I don't like you. Have, go through this and I, I challenge anyone to go through this. If I really went through this and put a little, a little uh, dialogue box on the screen, Every time I quote a verse of scripture, you'd be surprised there'd be popping up everywhere. You who are lukewarm, God's going to vomit you up. Revelation chapter 3, verse 14. What if I didn't even put the verse, make you read the whole chapter? They love not, not their life so much as to shrink from death. Revelation 20. Babylon the Great, the gospel goes out to every nation, language, tribe, and people. Then Babylon the Great falls. Then the mark of the beast comes out. Then this calls for patient endurance on, and faithfulness on the part of those who remain faithful to Jesus. Then blessed are those who die in the Lord from henceforth. Then the rapture harvest of the earth. Then God pours out his wrath on the inhabitants of the earth. That's all Revelation chapter 14, 15, and 16 clear verse of scripture. That day will not come until first there be a great falling away and the man of sin is revealed. Revel or, uh, 2 Thessalonians chapter 2. The, when I talk about the tribulation period and the great falling away, Jesus, Matthew 24 says, many will turn away from the faith and betray and hate each other unto death. And there will be great distress unequal from the beginning until now. This stuff has not happened yet. And the Bible talks of people will be saying peace and safety. They'll be saying the rapture is going to happen first. The rapture is going to happen first. Peace and safety. And destruction will come suddenly. Oh, I thought the rapture was supposed to already happen. Oh, Lord, I thought the rapture. Then... Okay, I guess I'll just stay behind to help. Are you kidding me?
Anybody who teaches that is teaching falsehood and lies. Anyone who teaches that the rapture happens before the mark of the beast, they're teaching falsehood and lies. They've changed, they've altered the book of Revelation, and now they're in violation of what the Bible says in Revelation chapter 22, verse 18 and 19. Anyone who adds to the words of this scroll, God will add to them the plagues. Anyone who takes away from the words of this scroll, God will take away from them their access to the tree of life. Still small voice has already gone there and done that. It's too late for her. Just saying. It's almost like blasphemy of the Holy Spirit. But he who stands firm to the end will be saved. So how can I say anything against anyone who stands firm in their faith, refuses the mark of the beast in the midst of that persecution, and, is, and, and stands firm to the point where God says, Blessed are those who die in the Lord from henceforth, and then lay down their life, be put to death, or living in the wilderness, be raptured up at that time. I'm just saying, didn't I just quote a bunch of verses of Scripture? Blessed are those who die in the Lord from henceforth, Revelation chapter 14, verse 13. The harvest of the earth, Revelation chapter 14, verse 14, and Matthew chapter 13, verse 37. Let me hear still small voice start quoting Bible verses like this. Instead, she's like, I met with him today, Jesus. And it's not Jesus. And he was... Crying so much he couldn't handle it. These end times are too much for him. He had to cut the meeting short. Are you kidding me? How does that line up with what the Bible says where, where John sees Jesus himself and he's like brilliantly lit up like the sun and his feet are like burnished bronze and a sword of the spirit comes out of his mouth and he's, you know, he's in glory. He just came from the presence of God the Father and here he is. He appears and says, John, I have something to show you. Meanwhile, still small voice sees a weakling who's begging for his bride to come to him. Please come to me. I'm sorry. Uh, let me reinterpret that for you. Jesus is not begging for the whore on the beast to come to him. The bride is right there by his side, and she's in love with him. And the spirit and the bride say, come, Lord Jesus, come. That whore on the beast says, we need more time. There's another teaching, a still small voice poking you in the eye. We need more time. Ask for more time. Why would you do that? And let me mark my words, when the rapture does happen, there's so much hell breaking loose on this earth. The Bible says, great distress, unequaled from the beginning until now, and never to be equaled again. And and, and if you look at the history of World War One and Two, that's not considered it. There's greater distress coming at the very end here. It hasn't happened yet. Great distress, unequaled from the beginning until now, and never to be equaled again, has not yet happened. Because he's talking about how those days are cut short for the sake of the elect. And he says, when you flee, he said it. He said, you're going to have to flee. And during the days of the Apostle Paul, there could not be a great falling away as of yet. But now you look at the earth, you look at the church, you look at Christianity, and you realize, yeah, there could be a great falling away. So now, finally, the earth is finally ripe for that harvest. When you look at... In the 50s, during the Cold War, and everybody is afraid, scared about the nuclear attack that could come from Russia. And they say there's two kinds of attack. There's the one that's known about that's coming, and then there's the surpri surprise attack. That's what they said in the 1950s um, you know, video doc documentary about how to survive a nuclear strike. There's two types of attack. One that's known of and anticipated, and then there's the surprise attack. Oh, okay. But the earth was not ripe for the harvest back in the 50s. Just saying. So, yeah, I'm calling out Still Small Voice again, and I'm going to tell you straight up, her and her followers are at the very least lukewarm disobedient. And her teaching, do you want to stay behind to help, is proof that that's not Jesus she meets with. Her teaching that the rapture could happen any minute without warning people about the mark of the beast. And you know what? You don't have to disagree with me. You can disagree with me all you want. But all that really matters is that everything's going to happen exactly as I say because I'm telling you how it happens in the Bible. First, the gospel goes out to every nation, language, tribe, and people. Then Babylon the Great falls. Then there's great persecution and the mark of the beast comes out. The man of sin is revealed and there's a rebellion. And then after that, 
Blessed are those who die in the Lord from henceforth. And God says this calls for patient endurance and faithfulness on the part of the saints and those who remain faithful to Jesus. And then after that, finally, Revelation chapter 14, verse 14, the rapture, harvest of the earth. Anyone who teaches that the rapture happens in, in Revelation chapter 5, 4 or 5, you have just stepped into adding to God's word. You've just added to it because it's not there. It doesn't say that. There's a harvest at the end of the age that Jesus talks of in Matthew chapter 13, verse 37. And then there's the harvest of the earth that, that is written of in, Matthew, in Revelation chapter 14, verse 14. So I can tell you that's the rapture. Anyone who says there's a rapture somewhere else in the book of Revelation chapter 4 or 5, you just stepped in. Anyone who teaches that, you just stepped into that whole Revelation chapter 22 verse 18 and 19 where God says, anyone who adds to this word, I will add to them the plagues. I'm just saying, anyone who gets up there and publicly teaches that, guess what? You just slit, slit your own throat in the same way that blasphemy of the Holy Spirit. A lot of people don't even know what that is. They don't even understand. That's when the power of God is moving. Somebody is, there's a revival going on, and somebody gets up and speaks against it and says, that's not God. So we see that the weeds among the wheat are active choking out the fruitfulness of the wheat right now. That's their purpose. That's what they're doing. The lukewarm, they're in the body of Christ, but he's making his stomach so sick and sour that he's going to vomit them up. So yes, the lukewarm are in the body of Christ. They're inside his stomach, turning his stomach sour. And it was so sweet when they first got saved. They were sweet in the mouth. But now the Lord says, I got to vomit you up now because something about you getting in my, in my body, my body can't handle you in there. You're a stumbling block. You're disobedient. You teach false teaching. You teach, do you want to be left behind to help? Which means people don't have to get their heart right right now. They can wait until the rapture happens and then decide. And then there's that other teaching. Oh, the rapture is going to happen before the mark of the beast comes out. Well, that's not what the Bible says. That's not biblical. So how are you going to teach something that's not biblical and stand there and act like you're saved? You're lukewarm, disobedient. You might still be part of the body of Christ, but somewhere you got misled. You love not the truth, yet delighted in wickedness. Who am I talking to here? Still small voice, Claire, and her followers, and anything else like that. Anyone else who's teaching that same type of teaching. That the rapture happens before the mark of the beast. That the rapture happens before the great tribulation. That after the rapture, there's a revival and a bunch of people get saved. That's all false teaching. People who teach that are altering the book of Revelation and are already in violation of Revelation chapter 22, verse 18 and 19. Get your Bible out and read it. So how are you going to trust any of their teaching at that point? At the point that you realize, oh, this person just spoke blasphemy of the Holy Spirit, or this person just altered the book of Revelation, now you're going to follow that person? Are you sure? Come out of her, my people, lest ye share in her sins. Revelation chapter 18. So I'm calling everybody to come out of Joel Osteen's church. Come out of Creflo Dollar's church. Come out of that whole Christian, North American Christianity falsehood. Anyway, there's nothing you can do. The, the Bible says there's going to be a great falling away, and you could prove it to them in the Bible, and God's going to do everything the way he says he's going to do it. So no matter how much you try, you're not going to make the, the, you're not going to prevent the mark of the beast, and you're not going to make the rapture happen before. You're not going to stop the great falling away. It's going to happen, and it's written in God's word that it's going to happen. And I'm telling you, Claire is of still small voice, is one of the leaders of the great falling away. She's one of the ones who, basically, the blind. she's the blind leader who's leading a bunch of other blind... Same with Creflo Dollar. Same with, hey, Claire, don't feel bad. You're up there with the greats like Creflo Dollar and Joel Osteen. You should take a bow and, and receive your glory from that. Be excited that you that you taught a bunch of people that they could be left behind. And you taught a bunch of people, don't worry about it, peace and safety. The rapture is going to happen first. 
You can take credit for that and you're going to refuse to repent. Even though you watch this video, you'll refuse to repent and say, but I want it to be Jesus that I meet with. Too bad. It's not. And that spirit has a very carefully crafted, lukewarm, disobedient message. But the day is coming when you'll take the mark of the beast and everybody who followed you and listened to your teaching is going to take the mark of the beast and some will say, I thought the rapture was supposed to already happen and get mad at God. And in that case, it'll be a rebellion. Others will be like, oh, I haven't eaten in three days. All I got to do is take this mark. And I just go in there and I, they said that we get a thousand dollar credit right off the bat. I can go to and 30% and off your first purchase at Walmart. That's what I'm going to do. And they go take the mark of the beast. And while they take the mark of the beast, they'll be, still small voice said that the rapture is already going to happen before then. They're going to tell God that. God, I thought the rapture was already supposed to happen. Still small voice told me that. Anyway, I'm hungry. I'm going to take the mark. In that case, it's a falling away. I won't trust you. I won't trust God would do this. And they take the mark of the beast. That's the rebellion. So the Bible is true. What the Bible says is true. What the Bible says is false prophets will appear to deceive many. Really, the foolish virgins will go out into the night before the bridegroom comes. That's going to happen, folks. As a matter of fact, the Lord is waiting for them to get out of... You know, in other words, the foolish virgins were vomited up. It just, you know how when you first get sick, there's that first initial vomiting? And it's a lot that comes out. And then like half an hour later, you feel better. And then a half an hour later, you feel that knot in your stomach. And you're like, oh, I know it's not over. And then you have another session of in front of the toilet. Vomiting the lukewarm, disobedient whore on the beast. Then you think you're finally done. And you know, no, there's... And your mouth starts watering. You know there's something still in your tummy. And you're like, how do I get this out? Because you just feel so sick. And so you think, you know what? I'll, I'll go drink some liquid or I'll do something to induce this thing. But you know when you finally get it all out, when you finally vomit it all up and it's all out, you sit back and you go, oh, what a relief. Now, every single person who watches this video knows exactly what I'm talking about, whether you're saved or not saved, whether you're lukewarm or not lukewarm, whether you're a weed among the wheat, everybody has a revelation of that. So that first vomiting up is going to be a huge vomit. It's going to be a huge group of huge lukewarm people. But then the foolish virgins, those people are like the ones who were vomited up last. Because when the foolish virgins finally come away, the fall away, the Bible says that's when the bridegroom comes. So really, in a sense, if you wait and you watch until those foolish virgins finally fall away, you'll know the rapture is imminent. They just that that those three people that I know were sitting there in the cell complaining, they finally went out. And I was praising God, trying to worship Jesus, and they're like, I wish I, was I used to be free. I don't want to be in a jail cell anymore. Besides, my wife called me. I talked to my kids the other day. They all took the mark. I, I kind of want to go home. I, wanted to get, I want to see the game, too. I think the Super Bowl this year is going to be a good one. Sitting there in a jail cell. Meanwhile, those who are serving God are like, you know what? I gave everything I have away. I don't have anything to look forward to and i already know my wife and kids have been put to death because they refuse the mark of the beast you'll be like you know what i met the right woman i married the right woman we had children of god and they're saved and you you lukewarm disobedient you married the wrong woman you had seed of the devil in you that you gave birth to now they're all taking the mark of the beast and calling you every other day saying daddy come home and that might be a harsh interpretation of reality, but that's going to happen just as I said. And there's going to be people who are waiting in the jail cell, waiting for that person to go, knowing that when that person finally leaves, probably the rapture is going to happen. Because the Bible says the bridegroom was a long time in coming, the foolish virgins went out into the night, and then boom, the bridegroom comes. In other words, the very last, remember when last time you are really sick, the very last time you vomited, and you finally got that last bit out. 
and you vomit the lukewarm up, and you vomited it up, whatever it was, that last little bit. And you sat back and you took a deep breath and you go, oh, I feel so much better. And you just know it's over. I got it out. It's out. And that sickness is done with. Same thing. When the foolish virgins finally fall away, when they finally get out of the body of Christ, when they finally fall away, that's when, when Jesus will say, Whew, oh, I feel so much better. Now I'm going to go get my bride. 